Welcome back everyone, this is Dave from Corn Productions with my co-host Stacy here to talk about the original Quantum Leap, Season 3, Episode 14, titled Private Dancer. The episode's description reads as follows. As a male stripper, Sam must save a deaf girl from a life of prostitution and get her an audition with a professional dance company. The episode was written by Paul Brown, last responsible for Runaway, and next will write Nuclear Family. The episode was directed by Debbie Allen. This is her first directing stint on the series, one of two. The second is Revenge of the Evil Leaper. In both episodes, she would guest star. Now, do you know anything about Debbie Allen? Okay, so I know um, she's obviously a director. She's an actress. She's a dancer. Um, she had a very big career. And um, she was a regular on Grey's Anatomy. And she also uh, was a regular in the show Fame. Mm-hmm. Which, um, and then she directed, I think, some of those episodes as well as the movie for Fade. She also directed 36 episodes of Grey's Anatomy as well. And yeah, so she's, she's one of those, um, Multi-talented know, persons. Yeah, she's in front of and behind the camera on everything she does. Uh, I also discovered that she is the sister of Felicia Rashad. That oh! Would, that would be the, uh, the person who played Bill Cosby's wife in the Cosby That show. makes so much sense. And she also played Beth's mom. Right, that makes so much sense that she's her sister. I didn't mm -hmm. know that because every time I see this actress... Mm -hmm. I think of the Cosby show and yeah. I'm like she's not in that why is she making me think of that <laughs> right, right and it must just be because she resembles her sister and I know that's not who it is right but something in my brain was making a connection <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Felicia Rashad will also play Beth's mother in This Is Us uh, Debbie has 57 acting appearances 51 directorial credits and she also has 21 producing credits as well as a ton of work as a writer of music uh, performing those uh, those songs and a choreography uh, doing chore choreography on uh, entertainment. Mm -hmm. So she's a very multi-talented person. I wasn't yeah. sure if you were aware of her uh, existence or like who she actually was. She's listed as a special guest star uh, in the episodes. Uh, when it comes by, she's listed as a special guest star. Uh, so the episode takes place on October 6, 1979. The exact same day as Future Boy. Yeah, which is what I wrote. Yeah, uh, the same day, October six, only 20, twenty-two years. Twenty-two years, apart. years yeah, in the yeah. future, and I was trying to think: is there like some significance to that? Is there some reason? I, I can't think um, of any. Yeah, it just I looked seems, into it. I didn't see. It seems any. very random that mm. they would put two episodes taking place on the same day back to back. Right. Um. I mean, they're written by different people. Yep, yep. There's no connection whatsoever yeah. that I can see. Um, and also, I'm pretty sure they weren't filmed in this order. Right. Um, I saw something saying that he was had a hard time, uh, Scott had a hard time dancing in this episode because he hurt his ankle while filming uh, Runaway. Okay. Which aired, you know, several episodes ago. So right, right. I'm pretty sure that means they weren't well, filmed in this order. No, they definitely... They the air dates and the filming dates are very different. As uh, that's something I discussed in uh, an earlier video, that they're, they definitely like aired episodes out of order from when they filmed them, which is one of the reasons why it was not like a serialized show because right. they wanted the ability to just show episodes whenever they wanted to, mm -hmm. with exceptions here and there. But they did manage for the most part to match the uh, the leap outs in mm. properly, other than when they were. Uh, you know, having breaks, they would, right. they would put the ones for the reruns in, which mm -hmm. seems silly now when right. we watch them. But. <laughs> okay, so this episode originally aired on March 20th, 1991, and before going any further, I will tell you a couple of things. One, this is not a spore-free podcast. If you haven't watched the episode, I highly recommend you check it out and then come back and give us a listen. Secondly, if you're listening on one of the platforms that this podcast is now available on, feel, feel free to follow and check out my YouTube Corn Productions where additional content can be discovered, both Quantum Leap related and otherwise. If you're already on my YouTube channel, please like, share, and comment, and subscribe to my our channel. Uh, Shoutouts this week, a couple of sad ones. Uh, first of all, there's the Maui, the Maui fires. Uh, our hearts go out to those families that are involved in that. My mom actually lived in Maui for a while, so I'm curious if the fires took place anywhere near where she used to live. The other is for Ron Seppis Jones, which... I didn't realize you didn't already know about, so I'm glad I brought it yeah, up. Yeah, I hadn't before. heard this news. I'm glad I brought it up before I said it here because, you know, <laughs> I didn't want to see your heartbreak uh, live on air. But, yes, Ron Seppis Jones uh, played William on This Is Us. He won two Emmys for that show. He, you know, he, has, he had a great voice, and uh, he was just a very talented guy. 66 years old, not that old, way too young. Uh, moving on to happier shout-outs. 
Uh, one for Ashley Wright, he commented, he's saying that we were brilliant as always. Uh, Mark Davidson pointed out that Sam's acting in Catch a Falling Star was better than in Future Boy. And he basically attributes that to Nicole inspiring him. And I thought you had a pretty good explanation for why he was such a bad actor at the beginning of that episode. Because, you know, he was out of sorts. But this is a pretty good explanation as well. Uh, also, I talked to the daughter of Tommy Thompson, uh, Jesse, fairly recently. And it, uh, it seems pretty clear that she very much wants to get the two of them on the show to talk to us. So Yay. that will be awesome. Yeah, let's make it happen. Yes. Uh, one more thing before moving on. We were going to film... Trivia Season 3 uh, today. Unfortunately, Stacy had a mild disaster in our filming location. <laughs> so we're not able to do that. It's probably going to be postponed a couple of weeks. Adam was going to be busy next week anyway. So look forward in a couple of weeks from now. Yeah. Uh, so Stacy, your thoughts on this week's episode. Okay, so I know you told me you didn't really care for this episode that much. My thoughts have changed since okay. watching it. A so, little bit. So rewatching it helped you? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I've always liked this episode. I mean, I wouldn't put it in, like, you know, that top tier. Right. But, um, and I, I, th I think I pinpointed what it was as a kid. We get a clip from this episode in the opening mm -hmm. for, um, for this season. The, oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. one of uh, Sam and uh, Diana dancing. And, um, I don't know. It was that clip, I think, that I loved. Mm. Um, we know with the shiny, the shiny blue lights and the music playing, and we've got that checker floor, which is, um, even though we're in the 70s here, which I hate, um, you know, it's that 1950s floor, you know. Yeah. And I think as a kid, I just loved that clip, and I always looked forward to when that episode would actually air during the season, mm -hmm. seeing that clip every time we watched an episode. So um, I think that's what it was for me, was just, you know, the dancing. Mm -hmm. And I love this actress as well. Um, you know, looking at it, you know, from a, an adult, you know, objective standpoint here, I really can appreciate, they use a real deaf actress. Yes. You know, a lot of times, especially in older productions, you would see people who don't have the disabilities portraying people who do. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact that they used an actual deaf actress. And I think they did a good job of, you know, explaining what's going on with her character and talking about um, how she has to read lips and, and feeling the vibrations. And I feel like it was a helpful explanation to people who aren't familiar to being around deaf people of, of what, you know, what kind of things she faces in her day to day. And I just feel like they did a really good job expressing all of that. Yeah, um, you don't see, uh, during this time uh, when uh, this episode aired in 1991, you didn't see a lot of uh, deaf community representation. Right. Um, there was an episode of Star Trek Next Generation, Loud as a Whisper in 1989, where you still had Patrick Stewart, the Shakespearean actor, yelling at a deaf person hoping to uh, be heard, and, you know, that doesn't work. And I, I thought I had remembered something similar happening here with Sam, but that never actually happens. My, my memory was not quite accurate. Uh, there's no point where Sam raises his voice thinking no. he's going to be heard. There, there was a point where he really didn't know how to communicate with mm. her. And he's like doing like weird hand gestures that Which, weren't um, yeah. ASL. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, but it all fit in. And then mm. she's like, you know, was helping him. And, mm. and it, the fact that he was trying made her, you know, be able to open up to him and accept his help. Right. And, uh, you know... Back then, they didn't have a lot of deaf representation uh, for that community. And you'd be hard-pressed to find that now, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a little bit more. Like, for instance, there was a movie, Coda. I don't know if you saw that movie or not. I don't think so. Okay. Well, it had a, a lot of deaf actor, actresses and actors in that film. Uh, and, yeah, that, that was uh, it actually ended up winning uh, Best Picture that year. But... Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, you don't really see yeah. that much representation. Um, one great example, if anyone's looking for, for that type of content, is there's a TV show, um, Switched at Birth. Okay, yes. I love that show, mm -hmm. and um, one of the main characters on that show is deaf. And then mm -hmm. other characters as well that come into play, you know, her her friends and things that she, the character goes to a deaf school. And throughout the entire series, you know, we're mm -hmm. using ASL, we're learning these things, and... Um, you know, it's it's a main point in the series. 
uh, where, you know, it's not one you can watch while playing on your phone because you'll miss whole scenes because there's right. whole scenes where there's no audio. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's a whole episode where the entire episode takes place from the perspective of the deaf characters. Oh. And there's no audio at all in that episode. Interesting. Um, but that's a really great show. It's, you know, it's a, it's a teen drama. Yeah. Like I, that yeah. kind of thing. My, uh, my, my, the mother of my child was, uh into that show at yeah. one point she might still be i don't know but. it's uh it's a free form show mm -hmm. so check that out if anybody is looking for something uh a little different that covers you yeah. know that type of story okay so um basically every episode that i come into this with i come in with the idea of does this episode improve upon rewatch or does it get worse right uh from a modern perspective from a modern perspective but also you know you got to keep your own bias well, in check yeah, because yeah. you're a very different person now. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. than you were as a kid. You are a middle aged single father. Right. Yeah. Dealing with I, real I had, life. <laughs> I had a very different perspective from back then. Yeah. As a kid, I kinda hated this episode. And I can't even really tell you why. I, I maybe I just didn't like male strippers when I was a kid. I, <laughs> I don't know. But um as an adult, because of my negative impression of that uh, episode as a kid, I didn't really revisit the episode that right. much. Uh, and I kind of have these faulty memories of some uh, ways in which the episode kind of could be problematic. Watching the episode, it definitely does improve. Uh, I definitely appreciate more about the episode. And I think that some of the things that I consider problematic don't play out as badly as I remember them. Those, there's, there, there still are some issues here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think, you know, I, again, I always kind of liked the episode. Mm -hmm. wouldn't say it's great, but um, I think I enjoyed it, you mm -hmm. know, just as much as, as I did in previous watches. And um, in addition to using, um, you know, the, the actress, um, what is her name? Rondi Berrio. I'm Who probably has, pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> I, think I, I, I couldn't tell you, but <laughs> I'm not the pronunciation guy. You know. But... <laughs> Um, she only has four acting credits to her yeah, name. She so didn't really have. A I career. think she um, she did more in dancing though. Like okay. She was also a dancer, mm -hmm. and that's what I was about to say. Is in addition to that, they also cast you know a lot of dancers mm -hmm. in this episode. Debbie Allen included. Uh, Debbie Allen included. Who I, I, I'd mentioned, you know, she was involved in Fame. Like that whole mm -hmm. series was about dancing, and I never watched Fame, but actually was recently researching it because um, it had come up in the From Facebook groups. Oh, really? Um. So, another series we cover from, one of the characters is seen wearing a Fame t-shirt. Oh, cool. Um, Tabitha wears that in season one. And, you know, it had come up in the groups like, oh, what is this t-shirt she's wearing? It's like a picture of, like, a cast. And, you know, some people didn't know what it was. So, um, you know, doing research on that and uh, coming to the conclusion that it was meant as a nod to the careers of some of the people involved in that show. Oh, okay. Harold Perrineau starred in Fame. Okay. Um, he was in season six as a regular. And um, Jack Bender, who's yep, an executive director. producer, director, he um, directed a few episodes of Fame. Cool. Okay. So, I, think I, I think I noticed that at one point when I was looking through some of their credits. Yeah. But, yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, it was... A big deal series. Like, it had a ton of stars in it. A lot of people, you know, stars playing themselves and things mm -hmm. like that. So, um, you know, talk, it, it it makes perfect sense that you have that kind of overlap here when we're talking, <laughs> when dance, you know, is a right. centralized part of this story. And I just really appreciate that they did use, like, people who are professional dancers mm -hmm. and not necessarily just professional actors. Right. Um, even the person who plays the mirror image, um, Rod the Bod, uh, that actor's name is Chris Solari. He doesn't have a lot of acting credits, but I did see he's a dancer. Oh, that's cool. Um, which I was looking for throughout the episode. I was thinking, oh, there must be parts where we see him dancing in the mirror. And I don't actually think that happened. No, I, we only saw him a couple of times in the mirror. Yeah, so I feel like they meant to do that and then either cut it out or it just didn't work with the story for the fact that they hired a dancer to play that role. Right, right, right. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, anything else? Um, a couple. I mean, okay, so those are the reasons, you know, that I, I, I like this episode. I think it's it's got solid stuff. A um, couple things did seem a little weird. Yeah. Um, one thing I'll just put up front as is, is a general note is Al was behaving himself this episode more than I would expect him to. How so? Like, 
usually he'd be more of a sleazeball in this scenario. Okay. With his comments about yeah, yeah, the yeah. women. So and you're saying he wasn't acting like himself. Right. He was acting better. Okay. Then I would expect him to. He, I felt like he was a little out of character. Mm-hmm. And, you know, probably because uh, the point of this episode is, you know, stripping and prostitution is bad. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Um, and, you know, normally I would expect him to have more, like, sleazebally comments. Mm-hmm. And he didn't. I mean, he might have had a, a couple, but... He was more, behaving more himself. He was mm-hmm. behaving himself. Oh, behave. Okay, okay. To what I thought he would be, what I would See, expect. I misunderstood what you said originally <laughs> because I thought you said he was behaving like himself as opposed to. Uh, so yeah, I got, you. I got you now. Yeah. I got what you're saying. Um, and uh, and then just the whole concept of you know why and this comes up a lot. Why is this the person Sam well, left into that, to complete this mission? That is a huge problem yeah. in this episode um because why would she listen to him right like sam wins her over but the character that sam has left into they have no connection is, whatsoever is not a person who should be helping her right um i definitely have a lot to say about that but. and like why would she listen to this you know professional successful male stripper saying you shouldn't start stripping and <laughs> That actually comes up within the episode. It does. Itself. The question comes but up. But I feel like it's too easy. Like, he wins her over too easy. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a problem. I think yeah. she goes a little, goes from really hostile to won over by him really too quickly, yeah. in my taste. Right. But, uh, yeah, I guess we'll get into that when we. Yeah. And I, I also, there's a continuity error. Oh. Um, I'll talk about it when we get to it. But that, like, really tripped me up. And I went back and, like, rewound and watched this scene, like, three times. And I was like, did I miss something? Did I blink? But no, I, I found a problem. Okay. <laughs> so, but I'll, that's near the end, and I'll talk about it when we get there. All right, so let's get into this thing, and we'll talk more as we go. Uh, Sam leaps in as a stripper dressed like Zorro. Screaming woman, they're trying to maul him, and he's a Chip and Dale's dancer. We see him in the mirror. He's a good-looking guy. And uh, he says, oh boy, and credits. And it's a really breezy, quick opening, and I yeah. kind of like that. And we've got the song Ladies' Night playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a very quick opening. It uh, was definitely, uh, oh, I'm typing, and I, I missed the whole opening. <laughs> <laughs> so we come back, and Sam is trying to get out of this situation unsuccessfully. We see Mario and Bowery in the background. Mario owns the place, and he's a key figure in this episode. And Bowery works for him or something? Yeah, I... Some, I some type of sec- secretary I or something? I said she's like a hostess. Okay. You know, like you would get at a restaurant, although right. I don't, I'm not, she's, she's answering the phones, taking mm. reservations and uh, stuff like that. Also in the crowd is Diane. It's Diane, right? Or is it Diana? Um, the main character's name? The main character is Diana. Diana, okay. Yes. I, because I alternated between the names yeah, and I my had, notes. I had a hard time with the names in this one. Yeah. Um, we've got Diana, Joanna. And Valerie are our female names. And I was having a hard... I had to keep referencing back to where I listed them to like, wait, who is this person? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is their name? <laughs> uh, so Al ends up appearing at the 3 minute and 28 second mark. That's pretty quick for him. Uh, he's usually like 8, 9 minutes into the episode. And he's dancing away as Sam is being mauled. Yeah, so Sam was dragged off stage um, by Joanna, Debbie Allen. Mm-hmm. And um, we can see right away she has an interest in him. <laughs> right, yep. That definitely comes into play to this episode. So Sam narrowly narrowly manages to get away. Get away. He gets into the dressing room and is grousing about being degraded. While Al is basically like, "Well, what man wouldn't like being degraded?" And, right. And that's one instance of him being kind of sleazy and not uh, behaving himself, as you were saying. Yeah. But it's one of the rare instances in this episode. I definitely agree. Yeah. With that. I mean, I would have expected him to be like, "Oh, I'm gonna go, uh, you know, check out the." <laughs> The, the strippers, the, the strippers and, dressing room, yeah, 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 and I'm yeah. gonna go see what they're talking about. Maybe mm. I'll get some clues. Right, right. Yeah, he doesn't do any of that here. Uh, Sam says, at least, or he's asking. Hopefully, this isn't the '70s. And sorry, Sam, it's pretty much the '70s. Yeah. It's like at the very end of the '70s. And you know what? I didn't, I didn't realize that that dislike of the '70s was actually mentioned beyond Disco Inferno. Oh, yeah, it was mentioned many times, I yeah, think, throughout yeah. the series. So I was actually surprised to see that reference. I guess I just missed all of those. <laughs> um, his name is Rob the Bot, or the Bod? Rod the Bod okay. McCarty. And uh, he's a Chippendales dancer. 
he was a football player and he ended up getting hurt uh, and he ended up basically with this company. Yeah, you know what? That reminded me of uh, Kevin's storyline Yes, This Is Us. Yes. Although he became an actor, not a and dancer. Not a stripper. <laughs> uh, though, you know, you look good enough, you could have easily gone that he direction. He could have, yeah. Uh, Sam asks what he's there to do. And Al says they won't know for 24 hours. Right. Like, why? <laughs> I, I, in my notes, I literally have, what? Question mark. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was such a weird line. It's like, a weird line. We won't know for 24 hours. Okay, first of all, you don't have any idea. Right, right. And why 24 hours? Like you most, know specifically how long it's going to take? Right. Like most episodes, I mean, not most, but a lot of episodes are like, done and over in 24 hours right you get like a day or two at most a lot of times you know he'll say oh we don't know yet we're working on it right but yeah. to give a specific number like in 24 hours we'll know and sam i think reacts to this i'm like well wh- wh- i don't know well sam's weird. like what am i supposed to do and i think al says shake your booty or right, something, right. something like along that. those lines um you know so it's meant to be like ha you got to sit in this thing that you hate for a while right um, but yeah, it was weird, especially because when we do get answers, it's not twenty four. It's hours not later. anywhere near twenty four hours later. Yeah, uh, it's it's. I mean, it's like minutes later, really, when it comes down to it. it it's the same like same night, right? Pretty much. Yeah. So it's really weird. Anyway, uh, the the bartender out in the floor complains about a waitress who's been ignoring her, and this is the Diana character. Uh, and Mario ends up calling her a stripper. After the bartender says not to schedule her on the weekends anymore. Mario says he prefers to call her an exotic dancer and asks Sam to back him up. And Sam kind of plays along because he doesn't really know what the hell is going right. on. Uh, Mario suggests to Sam that he skip his next gig. And uh, Bowery is basically like, oh, we'll make it worth your while. But Sam declines saying he's really looking forward to his next gig. And yet he continues to hang around for like a long time. Like, he doesn't seem to be in a hurry to get to this gig. Um, I mean, I didn't, I didn't take it as thinking that, like, he was supposed to leave that day. Okay. I thought he still had some time left here. Oh, okay. Before gotcha, his, gotcha. Before he was supposed to move on. I mean, I don't really, I don't really know how that works. But um, the reason this is important is because, you know, he uses this desire they have to keep him on, um, oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah. here mm. as a bartering chip later on. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the be- this uh, beginning of the episode kind of reminds me of Disco Inferno, in that for like several minutes, all we're seeing is people dancing, and uh, and it's funny that it reminds me of Disco Inferno because Paul Brown, the writer of this episode, also wrote that episode. Okay, so he must like the seventies. I guess so, <laughs> and he must like dancing and all that stuff. Uh, okay, so a customer ends up accosting Diana, and Sam steps in and says. Not to get too friendly with the waitress. I didn't initially realize who this guy was. Me too, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I never picked up on this guy being anything of any importance until much later in this episode. Uh, we see Debbie Allen's character dancing that uh, with Sam in the crowd. And Diane also dances before she's dragged off by Mario. Yeah, and one thing about... Okay, so this scene... I felt it was really weird. It was a little weird. Um, because Sam jumped in and started mm. really enjoying himself. Mm-hmm. He's dancing with Joanna, and he's got the biggest smile on his face. He's having so much fun. Mm-hmm. Since when does Sam Beckett enjoy dancing disco? Right. <laughs> Especially since he's in this episode saying he hates the 70s. Yeah. But um, he seemed in his element. Now, I know, you know, Scott Bakula loves performing. Anytime mm-hmm. he gets to dance or sing or play an instrument, he's all over that. I'm kind of wondering if that was like an outtake or something like that, where they were just kind of like scoring around and they happened to include it in the episode or something. Um, yeah, he looked way happier than Sam should have been. Right, yeah. Um I-, I feel like Sam would have just like left. Mm-hmm. He'd have been out of that room as quick as possible. Right, and but he just keeps sticking around this area for no reason. Yeah, he I was dancing. See. He was definitely flirting with Joanna. Um, it was it was weird. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, Diana, who is working as a waitress at this moment, starts dancing mm-hmm. <laughs> and, until Mario pulls her away and tells her to get back to work. Uh, so Sam ends up talking to Joanna some more, and we find out that she owns a professional dance company. And Joanna is all hitting on Sam a little before Sam walks off. Sam ends up spotting the customer that was harassing Diana, talking to Bowery, and he's eyeing the situation. He's like looking at this, like what's going on here? Mm-hmm. And at the at that time, I really didn't understand what this was about. Well, I realized what that was about, but I had it 
until this watch through realized it was the same person that we see later. Right. Like I was like, oh, that's the same customer. Mm -hmm. Got it. <laughs> and I think that had that had yeah, totally. I totally missed that on previous watches mm -hmm. of this episode. Absolutely. Uh, the bartender tries to talk to Diana, but she isn't responding because she's deaf. And Sam ends up interfering and realizing that she is, in fact, deaf. Yeah, so Sam, he tells us in this episode he's never met a deaf person before. Mm -hmm. Yet yeah, he's the one who picked up on this so quickly that that's what's happening here is right. she can't hear anybody talking to her. Mm -hmm. How come nobody here has picked that up yet? I don't know. How long you've has got, she been working here? Right. You've got the <laughs> boss. You've got the bartender, customers. Nobody's picking over the fact that she can't hear you is the right. problem. Mm -hmm. They just think she's stuck up and ignoring them. Right. Uh, yeah, I think, but I mean, these aren't the smartest people in the world, but still, I think someone would have figured out by now that she was, in fact, deaf. Uh, Al appears to tell Sam that she is why he is here. Yeah, and it's, like you said, it's been Not minutes, even, an yeah, hour, like, maybe? Yeah, at best. Um, but there was no, like, oh, we had a breakthrough, mm -hmm. some reason why we thought it was 24 hours, but now we know right away. It was just right. like, here, this is what you're here for. Very uh, good timing. <laughs> a little yeah. convenient. Apparently, she goes from dancing in Mario's parties to prostitution to dying in the 80s from AIDS. Yeah, 1986. So, within the next seven years... And the mission is to get her not to become involved in that. And Al adds in this thing about getting her to go back to school. And, and like we said earlier, this is a really weird mission for Sam in this person who has no relationship to Diana whatsoever. Right. Like, this is really the best person that we could come up with. I think maybe Valerie would have been Valerie a better choice. Valerie would have been a great choice. I don't know that Mario um, would have made sense. I mean, but... Mario, I think, would have made more sense being mm. the boss. He might have been able right. to help redirect her and mm. keep her waitressing or whatever. Um, and, like, yeah, how is Sam... Another dancer? Mm. Like, like, one of the professional dancers? Right. Not the stripper? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, how is Sam in this position supposed to get her to go back to like, school? Like, maybe Joanna? Right, Or yeah, that, like, yeah. Joanna has, like, an assistant with her. That would have been a good person. Mm-hmm. I think Joanna herself might have been a bad choice, only because we need to win Because it might not have been over. sustainable. Yeah, yeah. We, we have to win but yeah, over that, Joanna. Yeah, that person that's with her would have been a great choice. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I was... I don't know. Right. It, 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 it seems odd. The whole thing seems a little odd. And, um, you know, that's something... This episode, you know, similar with last week, which I don't know if I actually brought this up when we were doing Future Boy. I meant to, and I don't know if I actually said it. Um, in both of these cases, the character that Sam leaps into, we never really learn anything about them. <laughs> we don't touch on their lives right. at all. Mm -hmm. It's all about, oh, this other person that you just happened to meet. Right. Um, which, I mean, that happens sometimes, but... It feels weird when it's like, oh, we don't know anything about the Leapy. Right. Other than, like, their name and occupation. Mm -hmm. And we never touch on, like, we never go to their apartment where they live. Mm -hmm. We never meet any of their family. We never, we never touch their lives. Like, what are you missing in their life? Right. While you're, you know, taking care of this <laughs> other stuff. Right, right. Yeah. yeah that's a good point. Um, okay, so Sam goes to Mario to tell him that Diana is deaf. And I'm like... This is what, the way you're going to go about this? <laughs> you're going to go to her boss and tell her that she's deaf and basically selling her out? How do you know that she's not going to be immediately fired for this, for all you know? Right. Like, I, I yeah, that's problem number one I have with Sam's actions. I mean, actions he's trying to explain what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he should have talked to her, maybe? Right. Yeah, he, he goes to Mario first and doesn't try to build a relationship with Right, Diana. doesn't even talk to her about what's going on. Right. Like, maybe he's wrong. Maybe she's not even deaf. <laughs> right. So, he ends up making a deal uh, where that he will stick around, cancel his next gig. And as long as Diana is kept around as a waitress right. and not anything else. And Right, because she's right now scheduled to go uh, strip at a bachelor party mm -hmm. that weekend. Yeah. And, um, and Sam's basically like, you keep her, you know, away from all that and I'll keep working for you. And, of course, he agrees to that because we already learned that they really want Rod to stay here. Right. Uh, and that's also a decision, making a decision for the host. Right. Like, without... what's supposed to happen in his life? Right, right. Like. <laughs> that's, that's an example. We never looked into what happens mm -hmm. in his life. Right. Did you just make things worse for him? I mean, maybe. Who knows? I don't think I would want to work with Mario. I mean, he's not the worst guy in the world, but he's definitely not the best. That's for sure. Uh, so Diana ends up turning on a song with a radio, and she's feeling the vibrations, and she begins to dance. 
she's eventually observed by a smiling Sam. She finally notices him and gets off the stage and tells her not to spy on her. He offers to walk her home because it's dangerous out there. And she wants to know, do you want protection? And uh, he's like, well, do you always have to be so sarcastic? Only when people don't let me leave. And, you know, I know that Sam has good intentions, but she certainly doesn't. Right, and do you blame her for not wanting anything no. to do with Rod? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, like a lot of the way she acts is justifiable. Yeah. And, it's, and Sam's actions I mean, are a little I mean, to her perspective... Sketchy. Is this guy any different than that customer that was grabbing right, her? Right, right. <laughs> Basically, he's what what is known as the white knight, the guy, the savior who comes in, but whose secret motivation is to get into your pants. Right. And she doesn't ever accuse him of that. She accuses him of other things, like uh, basically tr uh, showing sympathy to her because she's deaf. But that's the impression that I would take away if yeah, I were her. Right. Um, so she starts going home, and Sam starts acting like a stalker and following her. Yeah. And we're in New York City, so right. they're like... I think, in my mind, they're going through Central Park here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the same place that we had the stranglings happening. Right, yep. Um, in, uh, what episode was that? The Blind Faith? Yeah, Blind Faith. Season Which, two. actually, I didn't mention. I have that in my notes um, earlier. We were talking about, you know, the representation of the, the disability here. Right. And I just had the thought, like, this is such a better representation of a disability where Sam's interacting with that person as opposed to being that person. Mm -hmm. Like we get in Blind Faith. Gotcha. Or, you know, with Jimmy. Um, right. All these instances where Sam is taking the place of someone with a disability to help their lives. Mm -hmm. And in this case, he's actually helping the person. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I made the case in Jimmy, not so much in Blind Faith, that uh, I think Sam should have leapt into somebody else, someone to guide Jimmy to right. get to uh, you know, build him up. Right. That doesn't happen. Like in that episode, like Jimmy is gonna leave. You know, he's gonna come back, and he's not gonna have any idea how to do that doc job. Right. Exactly. That he just got. So yeah, um, I definitely see what you're saying there. Um, so as you know, Sam basically says, "Oh, I'm not following you. I'm here to get a hot dog. Do you want one?" And she's like, "Oh, well, I don't eat meat." And then the hot dog vendor immediately sells her out. Yeah. <laughs> because he's like, oh, hey, Diana, the usual. And uh, they walk together, and we get some pretty good scenes here. Uh, I just don't like how we got here necessarily too much. Uh, like, Sam's basically acting like a stalker. Exactly. And once again, I know Sam Beckett has good intentions, but if you remove Sam Beckett from the equation, if you remove Scott Bakula from the equation, who we generally root for week to week, and you look at these actions, I don't think you see them the same way. Right. And that's one of my the biggest problems that I had with this episode, uh, is that yeah, issue. like honestly, she should be talking to this uh, hot dog vendor who she obviously has some rapport with, and being mm. like, um, "Can you get this guy? I need help. Me? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's following me home." Right, right. <laughs> um, so she asked, Sam asked, "Why don't you tell people you're deaf?" And I'm actually kind of curious why people don't figure it out sooner. I mean, uh, I think I would figure it out sooner. The short answer is she doesn't want pity from people. And I have here Pitt for some reason in my <laughs> notes. I don't know what happened there. But they talk and bond, and she teaches him some sign language. It's it's lovely. The chemistry is nice. They had nice chemistry together. Yeah, and this is where, you know, we're getting some explanations, mm -hmm. some basic explanations on, okay, how, what is the proper way to communicate mm -hmm. with someone who's hard of hearing? Right. And, you know, this is where we talk about, oh, like, look me directly in the face, and I can read your lips most of the time. Mm -hmm. But talk slowly and clearly. And, um, you know, and just a lot of, a lot of things. And we can see that she realizes Sam's trying and we can see how she's starting to be accepting of that and, you know, help him with this mm -hmm. and how to communicate. But then we have a cut and we're still in the walk home and all of a sudden through like the part that we missed, they're fully on board and mm -hmm. she's told him her entire life story and they're best friends. Mm hmm all in the matter of a cut during this walk home. How far away does she live? That <laughs> right. they had, like, they went from, you're a stalker following me, to I've told you every detail of my life, and now I trust you. Right. Yeah, like I said, that's way too quick. And I actually, I kind of feel like that happens a lot in Paul Brown episodes. Yeah, you know, I looked through his internet movie database page and the episodes that he wrote, 
and I think maybe I'm just not a fan of his episodes, though I do like Nuclear Family. And he ha he also wrote Catch a Falling Star. So, I don't know. Like, maybe just certain episodes that he just doesn't do well with or something. I don't yeah. know. But Well, I feel like, you know, it, it, it's a matter of not having enough time to tell mm -hmm. the story you're trying to tell. Right, right. Um, that, that's a problem with Quantum Leap a lot. Yeah. Because you're, you're trying to tell this whole world, right? Mm. These characters introduced. You got to get us to know them, to love them, to care about them, and then save them. Right. All in 40-something minutes. Right. And then move on and never see them again. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a series-wide problem. Though some episodes are better at it than others. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of feel like this wasn't one of the better episodes for that. Uh, though, you know, we do have some great scenes here. Um, so we end up, uh, Sam ends up bringing up Joanne from the dan about the dance company. Yeah, because she's told him now that she wants to be a mm -hmm. professional dancer. That's her dream. He tells her about the audition that she's having, and he really wants to convince her to go and do that. And Sam brings her to what he thinks is her apartment. They kiss. It's a small peck. And as Sam leaves, he's whistling. We hear a little whistling uh, from him. And she, after he leaves, exits the apartment and goes to her actual residence, which is a van nearby. Yeah. And we see her sleeping and looking up at the stars or something. I'm, I don't know. Is there a roof there that uh, that opens up? Yeah, we see her opening okay. it. Okay. Um, so it's like a retractable roof. Gotcha. Okay, so the next morning, Mario is telling her that Rob, who is actually Sam, told her that she didn't want to dance at his party and that he already booked someone else. Mario offers her some money and says he can pay in another way. Hint, hint. Uh, she ends up declining and goes to Bowery and asks if she can help her out. And she says that she might have something. Uh, we see Sam hanging out with Al, learning sign language, and he invents the quantum leap sign. Uh, Sam ends up asking about Joanna, and apparently she's the best in the country. Sam thinks he's there to get Diane into this company. Al is skeptical, saying she hasn't even finished high school. And I don't understand his, like, his insistence on her finishing high school. Like, if he, if she gets this gig, and he, she's part of this major dance company, why does she need to finish high school? Right. Uh, so that... I mean, it was a message to, you know, the viewers. Oh, yes. Finish high school, finish stay in school. school. Um, but yeah, it was, again, a little out of character for Al. Right, right. That he's so like, oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> Get, getting her to be a professional dancer isn't going to help her. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but Sam has her life all figured out, you know, without even talking to her, of course, and tells Al he even put a stop to the stripping. And the next thing you know, there's a knock at the door. It's Diana, who's not happy with him. She slaps him and tells him to stay away from her. Right, and because... He absolutely deserves that. Right, because without her even knowing it... Right. He just took a job away from her. Now, yeah, from yeah her, it's not a good job. It's still taking but, money out of her pocket that she needs. But he made a deal for her not to get the job mm -hmm. without her being involved in this conversation mm -hmm. at all. Right. Like and, I said, you know, through that whole chat the night before, he could have talked to her about this mm -hmm. and didn't. Right. And, uh, yeah, that's, like, like I said, you know, there are episodes where I'm fully on board with Sam Beckett's actions. This is not one of them. I don't like his approach here at all. I don't know a better one necessarily, but this doesn't feel right. Um, so like I said, he basically deserves getting slapped there. And from her perspective, she's just someone that she recently met. Right. And she's doing, he's doing this kind of crap. Taking money out of her pocket that she needs. Uh, so we go to Sam looking for Diane. He's talking. At her building. Right. <laughs> He thinks he's talking to her landlord, and uh, it's not her landlord at all. She eventually points out where Diana's vehicle is and saying, uh, you know, they don't, you know, the, they need to clean up this city and blah, blah, blah. And Sam is just like, oh, yeah, so yeah. Um, we go to the vehicle, which has a parking ticket on on it. He knocks. How did she hear that? Um, well, I, I saw people complaining about that. And I, I mean... From my perspective, she should have known that someone's knocking because you're in a vehicle. Right. And if you knock at a vehicle, it's going to move. Okay. And it's going to, like, sway. Mm -hmm. And you're going to feel that. Okay. Because I, I, I you're have, in, like, a vehicle with wheels. I do have the uh, vibrations in my in my nose. And so also, I, I was looking at this, like, I also felt like maybe she was just leaving anyways because she 
got out and locked up and left. Gotcha. So it could have also just, just been, been she was already coming out of the door, regardless if she knew he was there or not. Okay. But I think definitely if you're sitting in a vehicle and somebody, like, knocks on the vehicle, you're going to notice mm -hmm. without hearing it. Okay. I think. All right. I'll go with that. Uh, she's not pleased to see him. He tries to start, uh, talk her out of going to these stripping parties. She points out, hey, this is what you do. What's the right. difference? And he's like, um, well, you know what? I don't think there is one. You're yeah. right. You have a well, point there. He, but. You know, she thinks that he's saying she's not good enough to strip. Right. Because she, he can't possibly be saying stripping's bad because mm. that's what he does. Right, right. Um, so she thinks it. she takes it as just kind of like, oh, you think because I'm deaf, I'm not good enough to dance. Right. <laughs> when in actuality, it's because she's better than him. That's, yeah. And he thinks that he could be... Um, a good, an excellent dancer with Joanna's uh, dance company. Yeah. She doesn't think she can because she doesn't think she can match her style. Yeah, she says she's, she's not ready for an audition. She needs right. more experience. Mm -hmm. But I don't think stripping is the experience you need. That's right. not going to help you get mm -hmm. the job. No. Uh, um, although she did meet her at a strip club. So, oh, I mean, yeah. I don't think that's, you know, necessarily a, a deal breaker. No, no, <laughs> not for her. Um, and, and, you know, this brings up another point is why during all of this, did he not try improving Rod's life at all also? <laughs> like maybe, like, uh, what's your name? Joanna kept wanting him to audition. Maybe you should have auditioned. Right, maybe. Why not get him out of stripping too while right. you're at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe, we, you know, for all we know, Rob likes stripping. Right, but like, if you're going to already make decisions about his career for him, why not make one that's better <laughs> uh, and audition okay. for this dance company? All right, rather than working for Mario. You know, and mm. then like... Uh, Rod and Diana can both join the dance company. Mm -hmm. like. That makes sense. Uh, so she starts sighing at him emphatically. He doesn't understand. And this is, I remember this as being Sam yelling at her, but that's not the case at all. He, he keeps the same tone and uh, volume. Yeah. And he's just basically like, look, I don't understand you. And she's like, well, now you know how the world is like to me. And she starts to walk away. As she tries to weep, Sam goes after her. And eventually, Sam tries to convince her to uh, do the audition. And like I said, she she keeps trying to weave. He keeps following her. I kind of remembered her him as her him repeatedly grabbing her arm, but that that's not what happens necessarily. But I don't think that what happens here is necessarily any better. Like he's still kind of acting stalkerish. And, yeah. Um, but she agrees. Right. In the end, she's like, "Fine, I'll do the audition." And then we find out that. We cut to the next scene, they're practicing, and she's been practicing for six hours. That's a long time. So they went from here immediately to start rehearsing for the audition. Sweet. And they spent, like, the whole rest of the day doing that. And uh, Sam suggests that she's maybe trying too hard and ends up dancing with her, and that's where we see that uh, clip from the Yeah, opening. that dance clip, and, um, I don't know, I just really like it. But also, if you're practicing, who's putting all these spotlights on you? What, what's mm. going on with that? <laughs> I don't know, maybe Sam set it up or something. But, yeah, you know... Uh, this is a really charming scene between the two of them. Like, like I said, there's good scenes here. And then they kiss. Right. Like, for real. Mm -hmm. Um. So we cut to the audition. Diana has survived a couple of cuts. Yeah, and she's doing a great job. She doesn't hear when her number is called. Uh, and Sam steps in and says, uh, oh yeah, she's right there. And Joanna ends up hitting on him a little bit, asking if uh, he wants to audition here and that. Uh, Al appears. And says Diana should be on her way to where was he? Oh, Miami or something? No, some midwestern state, wherever she came from. Right. And but like, also, why? Why is she going to go back to that state? She has no family there. Mm -hmm. She has to go. Why is she going back to that state? There's no reason for her to go back to that state where there's no one there for her. Not to mention, how <laughs> is Sam in this person going to be? Oh, like you know what? I think you should uproot your existence right now and go back home and go back to school. Yeah. Like that's realistic. But like also like. You can go back to school anywhere. You right. don't have to yep. go home where you mm -hmm. have no family. Right. I don't get it. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I don't understand Al in this episode much at all. Uh, Diana can't follow Joanna's instructions because Joanna isn't talking directly to her. And the instruction is to, you know, do the dance and then start improvising. Right, so they're doing the same routine that they've mm -hmm. been doing over and over that she's been practicing. But when it gets to the end, just do some freestyle. And Diana misses that prompt because, mm. you know, people are walking in front of her and she, she can't see her lips. And Diana is actually talking. I'm not Diana. Um, Joanna. Joanna is, like, talking, like, so that Diana can't see her lips. At right, all, right. At the same time. Um, okay, so, so. As far as Diana knows, she's just supposed to do the routine again. Right. 
And uh, so when she stops, she stops dancing. Everybody's still moving. Joanna th- stops everything that's going on and asks, hey, what's going on? Yeah, why aren't you dancing? <laughs> and uh, eventually Sam steps in to let her know that she is in fact deaf. And Diana, uh, Joanna doesn't think that she can give Diana the attention that she needs and ends up dismissing her. Diana ends up leaving upset. Uh, she goes home, what you know, what passes for her home right now, and it's being towed away for unpaid parking tickets. Yeah, and they're not even going to let her get any of her stuff out right. until she gives them $120. Mm-hmm. So Diana goes to Bowery for help, and Bowery suggests a date, which is more like prostitution, not right. really a date. Uh, Sam shows up at the club looking for Diana, talks to Bowery, uh, she lies to him, but eventually Sam realizes the lie and comes back to her, and says, he won't judge what she does for a living, but Diana doing it will wreck her life because he happens to know more than anybody else here because he's seen or heard of the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sam takes off after... Okay. So before you get there, this is okay. where I'm going to interject. Okay. About this scene. All right. Okay. So I rewatched this several times because I felt like I had to have missed something. Okay. All right. Uh, so first we had Diana talking to Valerie. Valerie uh, gives her money, says go buy a dress because you can't go to the date wearing what you're wearing. And then you're going to go meet this guy, right? So she leaves. And then as Diana walks out, the phone rings. Valerie answers the phone. While she's on the phone, Sam comes in. <laughs> so okay. the first problem is Sam should have run into Diana. Right, okay. Because they should have just crossed paths. Mm-hmm. She left. And he came in within a couple seconds of each other. Okay. Now, I feel like they meant for there to be a time jump here. Mm-hmm. But there wasn't <laughs> because the phone rang and Valerie was on the phone still. We didn't leave Valerie. There was no cut. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Valerie's on the phone. Diana just left. Al's here. Or Sam's here. Talks to Valerie. Then Sam goes and talks to the bartender. Right. Okay. And moments later... Al tells Sam that Ziggy got a lock on Diana at the hotel room. That was quick. And then Sam leaves to mm-hmm. go for the hotel room. But like one minute ago, she left here to go buy a dress. Mm-hmm. So the problem here is it feels like there was a time cut, but we've proven in this scene there wasn't. That, that sounds like a pretty big editing problem. So in the time it took Sam to talk to Valerie and talk to the bartender... She went and bought a she dress. She went and, and bought a dress, changed, and went to the hotel room. I didn't even notice any of and that. And if you've ever been in New York City, you're not getting anywhere mm. in three minutes. Ah, yeah. So unless, you know, the strip club, the dress shop, and the hotel are all next door to each other, yeah. it's a million percent impossible <laughs> that she's at that hotel room in her pretty red dress. Right. Uh, all in the time Valerie was on the phone. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So that was that was my continuity error problem. All right. So, <laughs> so Sam ends up going to the hotel where we see the customer that was harassing Diana at the beginning of the episode. He claims she isn't there, but Al says differently. Yeah, she's in the bathroom. She, the guy keeps threatening to call security. Sam barges in anyway. Uh, she eventually ends up coming out, and she's mad at him, saying, Hey, look, you can't fix my life. And Sam says he's going to be gone soon. Doesn't give an explanation as to why. Right. Like, there's a quasi-romance going on here, or was, at least. And he's talking about possibly being gone soon. But, I mean, that also fits the character, because he is supposed to be going on to a new gig. Right. Okay. I guess that makes sense. Uh, Security comes in. They ask Diana, hey, uh, well, actually, yeah, he basically, uh, so the dude says, basically, Sam broke in, blah, blah, blah. They ask Diana to confirm it for some strange yeah, reason. He says, is this true? And Diane ends up denying it, and they end up leaving together as friends. Once again, this seems like a very quick attitude change from her. Yeah. It's way too easy. Right. Um, and I, I think it boils down to she wants help. Mm-hmm. She knows she doesn't want to do this. Right. But she doesn't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. And she wants him to help her, even though she's so resistant of the help, because... She's learned that, you know, she has to do things for herself. Mm -hmm. Um, And she doesn't want help. But at the same time, she knows she needs the help. Right. That makes sense. So she is reluctant throughout this whole thing for his help. But at the same time, she really does want it. So it's kind of like eight and a half weeks where the the father's attitude isn't... Eight and a half months. (laughs) The father's attitude isn't necessarily... 
is what he actually feels. Yeah. It's what he thinks he should be saying. Right. And so that's the same here with Diana. Yeah, basically. it's just some, some stubbornness. Gotcha. Okay, so they return to Diana, or they return to Joanna. Yeah. And Sam convinces her to give a second look. And she does a solo dance while Sam, Joanna, and Al watch. And Al is impressed. Like, oh yeah, you were right, Sam. She's great. <laughs> um, Joanna likes what she sees. Enough so that she ends up slapping Sam for almost letting her get away. Diana and Joanna embrace. And uh, she's like, you know, we can teach each other so much. And Al tells Sam that Diana makes it. And the most important part is... This, and this is the kick he's been on all episode. She finishes she high finishes school. She finishes high school, but in three years, she becomes Joanna's lead dancer. Mm. Yeah. Pretty sweet. But yeah, deal. she finished high school too, apparently. Yep. So <laughs> yeah, yay for her. Uh, Al signs that it's time to quantum leap, and Sam signs to Diane, and Sam ends up leaping. Yeah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the episode. That's the episode. Uh, yeah, this is a better episode than I remember it being. It has problems. Specifically, most of Sam's actions in this episode. Yeah, I feel like Sam and Al were both just a little out of character. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, things just kind of didn't follow the normal flow for mm-hmm. either of them. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. I feel like there were some agendas in this episode that, you know, just didn't really fit. Like, they were trying to do too much. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole stay in school and right. all of this, like, being a part of it. Right, right. Um. It was all just, like, kind of squished in a little bit, Mm -hmm. where there were things that didn't necessarily make a lot of sense when Mm -hmm. you look at it objectively. Right. Uh, And, you know, I find some of Sam's behavior in this episode to be kind of patronizing uh, towards Diana. Yeah. But also, at the same time, there's some great scenes here. Uh, here and there, uh, it's it it kind of falls into okayish territory for me. I think it's better than something like Runaway for sure. Yeah, I get it's more coherent than that, but still, there's some problems here and there. Mm-hmm. Now the next episode, and I forget the name of the episode. Is it Piano, Piano Man? Man? Is that the yeah. name of the episode? Now that's one that's very forgettable for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen the episode several times, and I couldn't tell you right now much about it at all like i remember the basic setup Mm. and that's it (laughs) yeah um it could be because it's an action heavy episode and i don't enjoy action um but for me that's one that's pretty low on the list that i would normally skip Mm. if i was just doing a basic walkthrough by myself or basic rewatch yeah i end up skipping both episodes (laughs) but uh i mean sometimes i'll watch piano man because there is some good stuff in there too but yeah it's not it's not a super great episode, but maybe it'll improve on we watch, or maybe it'll get worse. Yeah. So, so by the time we do that episode, I'll rewatch it, and we'll see if uh, things change. See if, and I mean, I just watched it with you know with Adam when we did our rewatch maybe a year ago. We saw that episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not like I haven't seen it in twenty years. <laughs> so I have you know watched it again, but still, it's meh. All right. So, any other thoughts about this episode? Um. I just, you know, I think that uh, I, I'm glad that you uh, got a better appreciation of, mm-hmm. of some of it than you had in the past. Yeah. And if anybody is in the same boat where you skip this one, maybe go give it another watch. All right. And uh, if you skipped it, you're probably not watching this video, but, you know, still. You never know. They might just have us playing. Yeah. You, never, <laughs> you, could, you could very well be doing that. All right. We would like to hear from you. Stacy, can we reach that? I could be reached on X. <laughs> And Instagram and threads at TVN Coupon Talk. If you like this video and want to support the channel, there are a number of ways to do so. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm, I refuse to call it X. <laughs> uh, at Corn Productions. You can join my Corn Productions Facebook page. You can buy something from the Corn Production store on Zazzle, which has a whole host of new products, uh, thanks to my co host here. And uh, you can also buy me a coffee, which is a new way to support content creators such as ourselves. And you can like, share, and comment on this video as well as subscribing to our channel. This is Dave and Stacey from Corn Productions signing off.